Back in my day, I can remember a time when the Atari 7800 had almost nothing as far as new homebrew games went. It seemed like from all the Atari systems, from the 2600 to the Jaguar, that it received the least amount of attention. Now, I know for a time that was because of the... Uh, encryption issue which prevented some developers from being or pretty much any developer from making much anything on it um, but after that was resolved and some time passed and of course we had Bob de Crenzio uh, come up with uh, a bunch of games now it seems like almost every week there's something new to play on the 7800 and enough that I'm sure that I'm missing some stuff here and I'm not meaning to um, but this is Super Racer Pro, or Super Pro Racers, sorry, uh, by Ben Larson, and this was posted to Atari Age. And I have to say that this is actually my favorite homebrew game <laughs> currently. Um, what you're seeing here is the first time that I gave it a play, uh, but I really enjoy this. This game is a lot of fun. If this was a game that was released back in 86, 87, you know, whenever, during the 7800's lifetime, you know, just add in a few more bells and whistles, particularly like any animations, like a podium sort of thing when you uh, finish the race. And, I mean, the sound's not bad at all it's actually pretty good but you know throwing some pokey sound and stuff like that maybe a few more things on the side of the road um, this would have probably done fairly okay fairly well in on the market back then of course there's no way to ever know for sure um, but it currently has five tracks it's only a 32 kilobyte game uh, ben did mention in the thread that uh, he may take it up further um, which I would love to see him do, add more to this and see where he can go with that. I mean, one thing that this also reminds me of, I mean, I'm sure some Atarians might instantly think of Atari Sprint. However, this is actually much closer in style to a more obscure racing game that Atari released just to arcades back in the 70s called Superbug. Now, Superbug was the first video game to employ eight-way scrolling. Okay, so there is a caveat to that, which I need to mention, <laughs> as it's not something I can just explain in text. So I'm doing research for a book right now. Uh, it's about the history of arcades, and in the process of doing that, I discovered that there was a game released in 1976 called Race by a company called Fun Games, which actually had eight-way or multi-directional scrolling first. However, Fun Games was made up of some ex-Atari employees, and they were shut down as Race was beginning production, as they had pirated Atari's breakout, essentially stealing their design, and they had released it under their own thing, and they were shut down. And so Race didn't even really get much in the way of production. There were 300 cabinets, most of which were turned into a bowling game by another company called Meadows that had bought them out. And I haven't even been able to find any evidence that uh, there's any existing copies of Race left. But if it is true that they had stolen Breakout, it's very possible, although I can't substantiate this with absolute proof, that they stole Superbug's code or its very early code and just got it out the door to say that they were first, which wouldn't have been the first time something like that had happened in video gaming history and so I would still consider Superbug to be the first because especially if that was if it was based on that um, but just figured I'd throw that out there and if anybody's interested in that book I'll have more details on that in the coming months like what you see here where the screen can scroll vertically as well as horizontally um, but the problem with Superbug is it just wasn't terribly exciting. You didn't race against anybody. It was just against the timer. Um, but it was a lot like this where your car was in the center of the screen and it would follow you around and you just had to try and get as far as you could uh, before the timer reached zero. Um, but had Atari taken that concept and applied this to it with extra cars and such, then... Uh, probably could have made it more of a series out of it 
instead of just leaving it to die in obscurity. Uh, but the controls on this are a lot of fun. It feels like a drifting racer, and it just, yeah, I really enjoyed what I played out of it. Another interesting note is that um, while the graphics are a little bit dark, um, what Ben did is he's doing the, did this in 320B mode, so that's the higher resolution mode for the 7800, which was not used in most games. Um, I think as I mentioned in some previous 7800 videos, most of the time it's the 160 resolution mode where things look a bit more chunky uh, than they do here. The problem with the 320 mode is that you just don't get as many colors on the screen, but if I'm recalling correctly, the actual size of the pixels is a little bit higher than what the NES does but of course the NES at its resolution is able to do a few more colors on the screen in its standard mode. Again, yeah, if I'm recall recalling all that correctly. Anyways, uh, what do you think from this? And I may do some more footage of this, do the other tracks too, uh, just because I had so much fun with it. But uh, let me know what you think of this one and what you'd like to see out of it uh, if Ben continues to develop it further. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.